On this episode of The Janet Oasis, I'm Nola Simon, I'm the host. I'm going to do a review of a company to demonstrate my pre-work that I do before I would have a discovery call. Now, this is a scenario, this is based on a real company I'm familiar with. They have not contacted me. I'm just using this as an example, and it's going to be anonymous. I'm going, not going to be using the company name, but I'm just going to really do a review of what I can learn about the company before I would go into a call with them if they contacted me to consult about hybrid work. Based on that proviso, let's just go into where I would start. So I would take a look at LinkedIn because LinkedIn is honestly where I start and do most of my work. And I would type up the company and take a look at their company page. And the reason I'm doing this as a podcast instead of like a web demo again is because I want it to be anonymous. And so I'm going to be taking a look at the company page and taking a look at how many employees they have and how many employees are on LinkedIn and what I can determine in terms of how they interact with each other, how they interact with LinkedIn. Okay. So we've got 13. 1,500 employees on the, in the company. Let's just take a look at the posts. The posts are typical corporate things. They've got some team posts. They've got a mix of video. They've got a mix of print. Most of this all looks like it's being designed by the corporate team. So that's fine. It's interesting. Let's just take a look at their life tab and see what they've got. So we've got whole thing about building career and why you'd want to work with them. Pretty generic stuff. Their commitment to community and travel, which is related to the pre-pandemic stuff. How they sponsor sports teams. They've got some company photos, which again are really just group shots. Nobody's really identified in them. A lot of them predate the pandemic. So it makes me wonder what happened during that. And then there's a testimonial. Let's just take a look at that. God. Interesting. He's, they've chosen to do a testimonial of somebody who only has 300 connections. I would say that there's not a whole lot of interaction with these employees. Most of them are based in Canada. What else can we learn from here? They're pretty stable in terms of head coat distribution. They had a whole lot of hiring in January of 2021. And as tailed off in recent hires. We have an SVP, a chief investment officer, and a, a, another senior vice president. So that's interesting. Now, there's not really a lot happening here. So I'm, they don't even have their website in the domain for the URL. So they're really not that great in terms of what they're doing on LinkedIn. Who are their people in terms of senior management? Okay, so a lot of these senior people really have somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 contacts. This is not a company who really promotes simply advocacy. They're not really taking advantage of that, and they're really not posting much about what it's like to work there. So that causes me some concerns because how are you attracting anybody to come and work for you if you're not using that social media? So let's take a look at their website instead and we'll go into their career opportunities and how they describe themselves as an employer. And I like to go into job description. So I've found a job description that is posted 
And it's interesting because they're listed as one of the top employers in Canada for empowering employees with tools to thrive while working remotely while also providing resources to ensure physical and mental wellness. So that's interesting. So they reference working remotely. I'm assuming that's pandemic remote because lower down, they're dedicated to offering a hybrid work environment where when applicable. What does that mean? No idea. It doesn't really define it. And further down, they have rotating shifts and work from home opportunities. Again, that's not defined in terms of if you'd be immediately available to do that or not. So there's no real explanation of what it's like to work there. So to me, that sounds like they have not made up their mind about what that's going to look like. And so that would be why I think that they'd be a good candidate to have an assessment done by a consultant because they need to fine tune that messaging. So let's take a look at what's happening in terms of news for the company. All the news is really related to products. So nothing exciting there. I'm not talking about anything to do with how they're treating their employees. Other than that one little brief comment about hybrid work and winning rewards for how they treated their staff during the pandemic, which is all great stuff. Oh, there's a news article about how they're planning to do hybrid work. So this is dated back last July. And they're really just talking about doing pilots. So lots of things have happened since last July. So that's disappointing that it's that old. Makes me wonder if there's a leadership concern there as well. So why are they taking so long to make that decision? Is there anything that we need to know about their stock? Let's see what we can find out about because they're publicly traded. Let's find out what we know about their Uh, here's what's going on. Their CEO is stepping down. So that would explain why there's been delays. So he's retiring and the new guy's not coming in until the end of June. There's a lot of talk about his achievements in the past, but nothing that's really forward thinking in terms of what's going to be. So that kind of makes sense because there's some flux there. So they've got an interim person who's serving as executive vice president since merge. And so that's what's going on there as well. Okay. So that makes a whole lot of sense because that's really where they've got to get their vision together and make sure that their leadership is in term. So I'm concerned about this company, to be honest, because anytime you've got a, a serious, significant change in leadership. That's going to be affecting the vision of how the company moves forward. So I'm worried, honestly, about the communication that they've got with their staff, because we know from LinkedIn, from their company page, that they're not really communicating with staff. There's nothing in the media. Let's check Reddit and see if there's anything on Reddit about the company to see what employees are saying, because I think that these employees don't.
have a lot of communication going on. It's interesting, the comments on Reddit are really all about their products. So I see anything related to hybrid work related to this. Company. I'm just taking a look to see if there's anything mentioned there. So lots of comments about hybrid work, but is, is there anything specific about that company? You know, that's probably a good signal and just because that means that people aren't necessarily turning to social media. They're talking to their staff. As I said, like they had some hiring, but they've got fairly good retention. So that maybe that makes that their internal communications are fairly good. I just wonder how long that's going to last. So that's a question that I would have for them. The company as a whole seems stable other than the fact that the CEO is changing. Financially, I don't see any large question marks that I would uh, really want to bring up in terms of what's in their financials. So it's really more about what the vision is of this new CEO, what the transition plans are, how you're going to ensure that people are feeling confident and stable and they're developing trust in that new CEO and any plans that are going to be implemented because of that. Now let's just check Glassdoor and see what they're saying about the company because Glassdoor is always interesting. Sometimes you can believe it, sometimes it's Interesting. So let's just take a look here. Got lots of reviews. Oh, they're their previous CEO won an award. So that again means that I'm interested in how that's going to go. There's no room for growth. You keep doing the same thing every day. These are like the summary of the sections, it's hard to move. They let people go all the time as they keep going through internal changes and mergers, but they're saying overall it's good benefits, good salary, good location. People are awesome. But let's go back to their website. In terms of the reasons that you want to work for this company, they, they listed their, their cafeteria as an attractant. So why would you want to work for this company about us? Let's go back to their about section in terms of careers. So they're listing, they've got a good team, they're smarter world, they're proud to do good work. It's valuable, greater opportunity to build your career, learn and grow, supportive, a community to diversity and inclusion. They've got a you know, competitive pay group, RSP, employee share purchase plan. They've got benefits for having a baby and they do top up, which is great, except my kids are teenagers and I don't care. So well, personally, they, there's not a whole lot on here that would make me want to apply for them because most of their people that they're trying to attract are obviously younger in terms of just starting their families. You got good benefits. Like these are table stakes, but referral bonus. It's generous. They have paid time off, but they don't say what their paid time off is. They offer paid volunteering. They've got a cafeteria and they have arrangements to do staff accounts at a third party bank. And their discounts really are on, again, these are table stakes, home and auto, gym. TTC Metro Pass. Again, if you're working hybrid or remote, do you really need a funded Metro Pass? So obviously they are trying to attract people who are in the city. And then they offer an EAP, which is designed to, that's probably the support that they're talking about for mental health. So honestly, I don't think this is innovative and wonderful. Again, I, I question what types of candidates these people are attracting, how people are going to feel working for them. Wages and salaries are on the lower scale and back on. <laughs> 
the glass door the benefits are horrible and think about people who are doing the day-to-day -day operations building up the business to stay competitive not much respect of rewards just budget cuts so oh, that's interesting unending overtime poor pay no work-life balance can be long hours at times salary could be higher management could be improved Career development is not ideas. So that's the first mention of the development they were talking about. Oh, highly underpaid, constant push for overtime, return you get the cheapest Chinese food. Now that is 2022. So that their advice to management is to resign. So that's, you must be intelligent to survive here. Okay, so I have some major questions about culture so i'd be asking questions about this zoom fatigue personal development compensation is limited because what i'm seeing is there's a break in the employer brand between what the company sees as the employer brand versus what the employees are seeing as the employer brand and i think that these people are going to have some challenges in, in retention and also attracting staff because they're obviously not paying well their benefits are nothing special and they are not clear on their hybrid and remote work policies if they're rewarding people with food that's limited to it being in the city in the geographical area because personally i live in a small town and, and honestly those food benefits never you know worked out for me because the stuff that the company is aware of don't exist in my town so those types of rewards are very challenging if you are working with a distributed workforce that live outside of the geographical area you live so it's a challenge to create those types of rewards that people are going to value because are they fair are they going to reflect what's available around the employees area so this company really needs some imagination in terms of how they're going to be retaining and attracting staff and one of the ways that they really could do that is obviously do a compensation review but to look at the uh, the flexibility that they're offering within their their organization and how those jobs are designed it seems that they're suffering from overwork so is there an opportunity do they need to hire more is that why they're having the workload issues but have their roles really just grown and, and and nothing has been reviewed. Is there work that is being done that doesn't need to be done? What can let go? Can they optimize their their staffing? Can they do assessments like the UMAP assessment, which is based on Clifton Strengths, to optimize work so that people are working in flow? And these are all questions that I would ask this company. And so I would, again, start with look, looking at what their intention is, talk to them about what their intention is and what they're trying to achieve and what their challenges are. And I think, honestly, a lot of their challenges are probably related to the shift in management right now. Anyways, that's what I see. And yeah, let me know if you have questions.